Hello all and welcome to Fair Falcon Predictions here. Today is the eve of the election and we will be doing our final Senate prediction for this upcoming midterms that is now upon us. As J. Miles Coleman says, even though he's not the greatest anymore, it's still a banger quote nights before the election, always the hardest to sleep. So when we get started here, we have the vice presidency here that stays blue. He can't adjust it at all. But now we're going to start going for the safe democratic states, and we will start with the state of Hawaii. There is really nothing to see here at all, and um, we will be adding on additional all the way up to tilt, no toss-ups for anything. I do not have anything to say about Hawaii, nor California, though I will say the Hawaii will probably hold up to at least the 2020 presidential margins. California may be a little tighter on the Senate level, but not a ton, and it should be a little wider than the governor's race. So Oregon, um, that is still safe democratic in my book. And despite the governorship being very contested, this is not gonna roll over to the Senate race, especially because they nominated the QAnon loser again. So. Our next safe democratic state is the state of Illinois. I can barely even think of the Democrats opponent's name, Kathy something, not Hochul, but there's nothing for me to say about that race, so uh, we'll move on. So um, our next safe democratic state will be the state of Maryland, and this race has a literal nobody who got 16 or 17 or whatever percent of the vote in the Republican primary, and they don't have any sort of runoff or 40% plurality rule or anything like this. And yet this rando who's probably raised not even enough money for a Dunkin' Donuts run is probably still gonna come a little closer to Trump thanks to the national environment as well as other factors. Then moving over to our next safe democratic state, it is still the state of New York. And this will by far be Chuck Schumer's worst performance, but there is no chance he's going to lose. And we rate these things by the likelihood that they're gonna flip, not necessarily the margins. And so Connecticut, you know, Rick Scott's dream, that is not gonna flip, especially with a Trumpist pick, maybe a little narrower, kind of like the McMahon margins, there's nothing particular here. Vermont, incredibly boring. I confused the Senate and House Republican nominees. And I think that does it for our safe Democratic states. So moving over to our safe Republican states, we'll start on, on the West Coast again, Alaska. It's going to be either Mrs. Chewbacca, and yes, I purposely said that, or it is going to be Murkowski, but either one is a Republican. And I do think it will be Murkowski by five or six points, but we'll have to see Idaho. I have nothing to say about that. Safe Republican. Utah, it is still safe Republican, although it is a very great model of how they have conducted themselves, and they really should have considered other options this time, but there's always the next cycle. So Oklahoma, for whatever reason, even though the margins are still safe, there has been polling showing that the Senate races are going to be a lot closer than the presidential race, but I don't really believe it. There were a lot of polls in 2020 saying Drew Edmondson would win. It did not come to fruition. Kansas, even though the governorship is competitive, Senate won't be South Dakota and North Dakota. Nothing here to see at all. Iowa, it is still safe Republican. Grassley will, like Chuck Schumer, have his worst performance, but there's no chance at all he is going to lose. Missouri is now completely safe with Eric Greitens out of the picture. Arkansas is completely safe. Nothing for me to see here. Louisiana, same story. Alabama had a contentious primary, but it is completely safe Republican. Florida, I am going to say it is likely Republican, and I apologize for going out of order here. Hope you will forgive me, because I almost am tempted to put it in the safe Republican column, but we'll put it in the likely Republican column here. Kentucky, it is completely safe. Mr. Rand Paul should win even by more than Mitch McConnell did. And um, Indiana, also safe Republican. Far cry from 2016 for Indiana, at least. And so South Carolina, and that will do it for our safe Republican states. Nothing to say here. And we will now move to the likelies. Ohio is likely Republican. The polling has started to reflect that people may finally be correcting for the underestimation in the southeastern Appalachian belt right here. And I do believe Vance will win fairly easily. Going over to our next safe 
or not safe, it's almost safe, but likely Republican state. Mandela Barnes is a mess. Ron Johnson will win fairly easily. And North Carolina, you can say lean or likely, but I do think it'll be a likely Republican Ted Budd, which is not saying a lot, but it's saying enough. And that is the key here. It's far better than almost any other competitive or somewhat competitive Republican nominee for Senate this year. And that will prove to be plentiful. And so I think that does it for our likely Republican states. So our likely Democratic states, Washington, we're moving out of the safe column, but Tiffany Smiley, with her polls saying she's barely ahead by a point with a plurality that's not gonna be enough for her to win but it could be five or six points embarrassing again like previous years colorado it is likely democratic odea is going to do well but the state is not there especially with a mail-in voting system so i do expect bennett to take it by six to seven points and that does it for our likely Democratic states. So we'll move on to our lean Republican states. That's the state of Nevada. Very telling with early vote data. Ralston will be wrong again. There's not going to be that level of split ticketing anymore. Not even that relatively small number compared to years past. And Laxalt, despite, you know, beating up on a cop when he was 20 or whatever, it might hinder him a bit, but it's not going to be enough to stop the trends in this state along with the shift in the national environment. And I think that does it for our lean Republican states. And so we'll take it. No lean Democratic states. We have one tilt Democratic state. I do think that Maggie Hassan is never going to make it, but it is a far cry from what it was, especially no early voting, just election day voting. So it is going to be an incredibly tight nail biter. We've had polls of different varieties come out, but I do think she will ultimately make it by a point or two at the end of the day, but the Baltic win would no longer surprise me, and frankly at this point, Chuck Morris might have won. So, <coughs> with that in mind, these three, I will spoil it for you. They are Tilt Republican, no particular order. I do think Blake Masters is going to come out on top. I am not a doomer, I am just a realist. I had Kirsten Cinema winning, I had Mark Kelly winning, I had Biden winning the state of Arizona, but things are different. The energy on the ground is different this time. And Mark Victor may have just given Blake Masters the boost that he needed. So going on to the state of Georgia, I do think Herschel Walker will squeak by in a 2018 style governor's race. My bad, not 2020, in the state of Georgia, 50 to 49 or something like that, avoiding a runoff narrowly. But even if he goes into runoff, I expect him to narrowly make it. This is one of the final hoorahs for Georgia Republicans in the state, and I do expect, for instance, John Ossoff to win next time. But that is still a bit in the future, but this is going to be more of a Wisconsin 2020 type scenario for the Georgia Republicans in reverse like it was for the Democrats. And last but not least, thank God this is coming to an end, Pennsylvania Senate. Dr. Oz is going to be John Fetterman. The debate really was one of the most publicized debates and that was not a good thing for Democrats in the state. It would not utterly surprise me if Fetterman won, but Oz should pull it out by a couple of points or so. And if Fetterman manages to win, it will be entirely due to Josh Shapiro. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you. I will be getting out some governor and house predictions later tonight. But yeah, without further ado, hope y'all can have some good sleep tonight because I sure will. Thanks for tuning in and uh, see you for a post analysis sometime after election day.